Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Starrett. H-Wave has been part of my clinical practice with athletes, patients, and clients for almost a decade now. And I want to spend a second talking about how I explain this amazing technology to those incredible hardworking people. First of all, it's important and imperative to appreciate that all human beings are built to move, we're designed to move. So historically, we used to take somewhere between eight and 10,000 steps a day. That's just how much sort of movement we, uh, we evolved to have. Now, the key here is to appreciate that a lot of our systems of health and wellness are actually bootstrapped onto this movement system. For example, if you've ever flown in an airplane and you wake up or you, you get up and you feel like you've got cankles, or your ankles are swollen, that's a classic example of sort of the mismatch between an activity and our lack of motion or lack of movement. So for example, what's happening when you have that swelling in your ankles after a long day is that the inactivity or lack of muscle contraction has failed to evacuate or decongest or pump that fluid back up to your heart. Now the key here is to thinking is that this system is not your circulatory system, this system is your lymphatic system, which is sort of a corollary system that helps to decongest and you might even think about it as like the sewage system of the body. So one of the things that we know, for example, is that the average human being makes about three liters of this lymphatic fluid, which is part of our nervous system, it's part of our uh, circulatory system, it's part of our immune system. And as a normal process, we need to have muscles contract to squeeze the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system turns out to be a passive system. So the problem when we encounter someone who can't move as much because of their work or they might have chronic pain or persistent pain, or they may have an injury which just you know, precludes them from moving very much, or they may even simply just have a job that doesn't allow them to walk around very much, what we start to see is sort of a mismatch between environment and organism. We're supposed to do a lot of movement and sometimes we can't. So first and foremost, the first time you put on an H-Wave and you realize that our chief drive here is not a muscle building contraction, but a muscle contraction that helps us to squeeze the lymphatics, suddenly you appreciate that, oh, what we're really doing here is we're helping the body do what it normally does. So instead of getting movement, with motion, we just have movement without motion. So I don't have to move around during the day to decongest and have healthier tissues and better blood flow and better oxygenation and better sort of waste management. I'm able to do that sort of in the background of my life. So for example, one of our favorite uses is during sleep. If you've ever had chronic pain or persistent pain or a painful area during sleep, what we know is one of the reasons that that's happening is that your brain is not hearing any movement signals now that you've laid down. So you're laying down, your brain kind of gets quiet, your body's not moving, and all that your brain can kind of focus on at that moment is, is hearing a potential pain signal or perceive what's happening from your body as a pain signal. So one of the reasons we love to use H-Wave during the night when our athletes and clients and patients sometimes have a hard time sleeping is that we're able to get non-fatiguing, non-threatening movement input to the body. So the brain starts to think, oh, look at this. These tissues are moving and it's not threatening, it doesn't hurt, so we're able to sort of desensitize the tissues. And one of the things that we know that happens at sleep, for example, is that you tend not to have a lot of muscle contraction. So sometimes you wake up in the morning and you might feel stiff or congested, or that swelling may have sort of triggered a threat response in your brain. But if you've been pumping all night and getting a muscle contraction into the tissues, well, that means that you can use that whole sleep cycle to actually get ahead of the sort of lack of activity that may be part of your daily process during the day. And so one of the things that happens is that we suddenly realize, wow, I can be decongesting and sort of getting a ton of movement into my system without actually having to program a ton of movement. So whether I'm immobilized in a leg brace or uh, you know, have really, really persistent neck or back pain and feel like I can't move the way I want to or, or exercise or walk as much because I'm limited by my circumstances, the H-Wave is a powerful way to, again, get the muscles using a little bit of electricity to do what they normally do, which is contract which again leads to this downstream effect of decongesting the lymphatic system. Now, this is important for several reasons. One is that we know that tissues that are poorly perfused and congested just don't work as well as they were in a normal system under a lot of movement. And second, we just wanna appreciate that sometimes that congestion can cause sort of sensitization. The pressure on the system is perceived by the brain as pain. 
And so if we can decongest, oftentimes our athletes and clients report that they have less sort of sensitized tissues. They can tolerate a little bit more and they have a little bit less kind of pain driving the system. So the chief use of the H-Wave, first and foremost, is to help your body do what it would normally do. But sometimes, again, because I work, because I have to sit at a desk, because I have to long commute, because I have to be on, a, on an airplane, it may not be possible to get the kinds of movement, quality, and quantity in that my body would, would prefer me to have, especially after injury or surgery. Now, second, it's easy to appreciate sometimes that human beings are actually electrical human beings. What we know is that, of course, there's an electrical signal in our heart that helps our heart pump, but we also have to appreciate that our brains are very much electro sort of mechanical systems, that they are communicating with our body through this, through the nerves, which are driven by uh, electrical gradient and, and discharge of those, uh, of those electrical gradients. So the key here is that we can sometimes use the H wave on the other side to help us manage chronic pain and persistent pain. In fact, we call it on-demand pain relief. And so one of the nice things is that the same tool that helps me decongest and move and load tissues again and get tissues sliding can be repurposed sometimes to give me some real relief and have my brain be able to take a second. The high frequency effects of the H-wave sometimes can help me to block some of that pain signal so that I can either break spasm or break tone or break my pain guarding or fear guarding so it allows me to do what? either pump again or move again. And what really what we're trying to do is say, hey look, the human being again is designed to move and all of our interventions are about returning activity and load back into this incredible tissue system. So a lot of ways to do that, but in our 10 years of experience, it turns out giving someone the power to help modulate pain, to attenuate pain signals, and to re-perfuse, decongest, destagnate tissues that need that that process can do a lot to get me back into the activities I love. This is how we've come to think about H-Wave and why it's such a cornerstone of our clinical and athletic practice.